Good morning. Good morning. Common ground. Common ground. Good morning. Good morning. We're still around. We're still around. Mr. Josh. Miss Jeanette. Miss Liz. And Miss LJ. We're gonna do calendar and maybe learn about the moon and maybe learn our letters and sing a lot and play. And math also. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Common Ground. I'm so happy to see you. Today, we have a very special episode of Circle Time because we have three stories and it's the third day of September. But Penny Dog, what day of the week is it? You think I should get my guitar and sing the days of the week? You do? Okay, let's do it. All right, guys, it's the 3rd of September, but let's sing our days of the week and let's see if we can figure out what day that means it is. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that was yesterday, Thursday, today, Friday, Saturday, one, two, three, four, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that was yesterday, Thursday, Today, Friday, tomorrow, Saturday. One, two, three, four, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. All right, guys, it's Thursday. That's so exciting. All right, before we get to our calendar, let's have a tune from Mr. Josh, then we'll find out what holiday it is. <laughs> I see you zapping. You face to face with greatness and it's strange. You don't even know how you feel. It's adorable. Mr. Josh sang that song to us. It was awesome. Well, let's get our calendar and find out what holiday it is today. <gasps> you guys, it's National Skyscraper Day. That's so exciting. Do you know what a skyscraper is? It's a super tall building. We don't have any skyscrapers in Reston, but there are skyscrapers in places like New York City and Chicago and other big cities. There are none in DC though. Hmm. There are some pretty tall buildings in Tyson's. All right, guys. Well, today is Thursday, September 3rd, one, two, three. And there's our little smiley guy. And that means that there's just one more day to the week and then it's the weekend. 
how fun is that? Well, September 3rd, I, I did say Thursday, right? It is Thursday, not Tuesday, it's Thursday. All right, so I promised one, two, three stories. So here's our first story, a Pete the Cat story from Miss Jeanette. Good morning, dear. Pete the Cat, Robo, Says Robo Pete. 
what is a string place? It's a playground, says Pete. My friends are here, says Pete. Allie, Larry, John, this is Robo Pete. I made him myself. Cool, says Larry. We're going to help John finish painting, says Callie, and then we're going on a bike ride. I want to go on that thing, interrupts Robo Pete. Thing? asks Pete as Robo Pete zooms up the slide. Robo Pete, I, I want to help my friends paint the fence. Paint the fence? That sounds great, Robo Pete says. I am programmed to paint faster than anyone. Pete and his friends try to help, but Robo Pete paints too fast. So instead, they write bikes and they read books. And after Robo Pete is done painting, they help him clean up the brushes. Pete realizes that it doesn't matter what they do, just being with his friends is what makes it fun. The end. That was silly. I just love Pete the Cat. I'm so happy that Miss Jeanette read that story to us. It was awesome. Well, Let's stand up and let's dance along with Mr. Josh really quick, and then we'll get to our second story of the day. The ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one, the little ones have to suck you some. They all go marching down to the ground, get out of the rain. The ants go marching two by two, hurrah. The ants go marching too, but you the little ones have to fly soon. They all go marching down to the ground, get out of the rain. The ants go marching three by three, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching three by three, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching three by three, the little ones have to climb a tree. They all go marching down to the ground, get out of the rain. The ants go marching four by four, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching four by four, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching four by four, the little ones have to shut the door and they all go marching down to the ground, get out of the rain. The ants go marching five by five, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching five by five, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching five by five, the little ones have to take a drive and they all go marching down. One more song? Are you guys ready for the second story? It's Thursday and it's been a while since we've had one of these, but there's a new Star Wars story with Miss LJ. So here she is. Hi everybody, it's Miss LJ and I've got my good friend Dio here. I was hoping that he could join us for today's story because he's in it. The Rise of Skywalker. What do you think? Can he sit with you guys? There you go. All right, let's get to it. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, the Jedi Rey trained in the ways of the Force with the help of her droid friend BB-8 and General Leia Organa, the leader of the Resistance. The evil First Order, led by Leia's son, Kylo Ren, who had fallen to the dark side, was growing in power. But the Resistance refused to give up in their fight to free the galaxy. Meanwhile, Kylo Ren used a Sith Wayfinder to travel to a hidden planet called Exegol, where he discovered the evil Emperor Palpatine. Many years before, Leia and a group of rebels had defeated the Emperor, but somehow the Sith Lord had returned. The Emperor promised to give Kylo Ren an enormous fleet and all the power he needed to rule over the galaxy. But first, Kylo had to defeat Rey. Kylo assembled his elite band of warriors, the Knights of Ren, and had his old mask reforged. He was ready for anything. 
Ray and her friends, Finn, Poe, Chewbacca, C-3PO, and BB-8, blasted off in the Millennium Falcon to find a second wayfinder that could lead them to Exegol. Their search began on the desert planet Pasana, where they met the rebel hero, Lando Calrissian. Lando told them they might be able to find a clue in an old relic hunter's abandoned ship in the desert. But before the heroes could thank him, the First Order arrived. As jet troopers blasted from above, Ray and the others made a daring escape in speeders. Ray and her friends ended up in the sinking sands that pulled them down into a dark tunnel. There they discovered the old relic hunter's speeder and a dagger with the location of a wayfinder carved it in Sith markings. C-3PO could read the message, but his programming wouldn't let him say it out loud. Suddenly the heroes ran into a giant, scary snake creature. Ray saw that the creature was hurt and used the force to heal it. The friends managed to escape from the tunnel, only to be spotted by Kylo and the Knights of Ren. Ray used her lightsaber to take down Kylo's TIE fighter, then used the Force to pull a First Order transport back to the ground. Kylo pulled at the transport through the Force, too. Suddenly, lightning launched from Ray's hands, and the transport exploded. Ray was terrified by her own power. Boom! Who have we seen use Force lightning before? That's right, Emperor Palpatine. So that must be pretty scary for Rey to see the dark side coming out of her. Before they left Pasana, the friends were helped in their mission by a little droid named Dio. The heroes flew to the snowy planet of Kijimi, where Poe's old friend Zori Bliss led them to a droid smith named Babo Freak. The small alien fixed C-3PO so he could tell them the location of the Wayfinder inscribed on the dagger. The Wayfinder was hidden on the ocean moon of Kef Beer in the wreckage of the Emperor's old Death Star, a super weapon that had been destroyed by the rebels long before. There, Ray and the others met Janna, who had once been a stormtrooper, just like Finn. She warned them that the ocean was too dangerous to cross to get to the wreckage. Ray knew they didn't have any time to lose, so she snuck off and sailed across the dangerous waves herself. Ray soon found the Wayfinder in the Death Star wreckage, but Kylo Ren was waiting for her. He tempted her to join the dark side. He told Ray the evil emperor was her grandfather. No! Ray cried. She ignited her lightsaber and battled Kylo as the ocean waves crashed around them. From across the galaxy, Leia used all of her strength to call out to her son through the Force, using the name she had given him, Ben. As Leia became one with the Force, Kylo was distracted and Ray knocked him to the ground. Leia was gone and Ray had hurt her son. Quickly, Ray healed Kylo using the force, then fled in his ship. She felt alone and scared. Had Kylo been right? Would she turn to the dark side? Meanwhile, Kylo was visited by the memory of his father, Han Solo. Han reminded his son that it wasn't too late to do the right thing. The young man threw his red lightsaber into the ocean. Kylo Ren was gone forever. He was finally Ben again. Rey flew to the distant planet Octo to set fire to Kylo's ship and tossed her lightsaber into the flames as well. She was determined to hide on the island forever. Suddenly, Jedi Master Luke Skywalker appeared through the Force holding her lightsaber. Luke was Leia's brother and Ray's former teacher. Confronting fear is the destiny of a Jedi, Luke said, presenting her with a second lightsaber, Leia's. Luke's words made Ray realize that she had to face the Emperor. She grabbed Kylo's wayfinder from the burning tie, but the ship was destroyed. How could she leave Octo? Suddenly, Luke used the force to raise his old X-wing fighter from the bottom of the ocean. 
Ray had everything she needed to save the galaxy. Using the Wayfinder, Ray flew to Exegol. She shared the coordinates with the Resistance so they could attack the Emperor's massive fleet of Sith Star Destroyers. Finn and Janna, riding creatures called Orbax, attacked the main ship's navigational tower that was directing the Sith fleet. The heroes fought bravely, but they were outnumbered and were almost defeated. Suddenly, ships from across the galaxy arrived. Lando had convinced friends and allies to join the fight. The whole galaxy's here, Poe cheered. As the battle raged above, Rey confronted the evil emperor, her grandfather. He urged her to join the dark side, but Rey would not give in to fear and hate. She was a Jedi and she was not alone. Ben had arrived to help her. Rey sent Luke's lightsaber to him through the force so Ben could defeat the Knights of Ren. Together, Ben and Rey stood against the emperor, but that was exactly what the Sith Lord had wanted. The power of two restores the one true emperor. He hissed as he drained Ray and Ben of their life and flashed deadly lightning from his hands. The emperor was strong, but Ray would not give up. She called upon all the Jedi of the past for help through the force. Then she deflected the Emperor's lightning back into the Sith Lord with Luke's and Leia's lightsabers, defeating him once and for all. Rey had used all of her strength to defeat the Emperor, so Ben passed the last of his life force to her, saving her as she had saved him back on the Death Star. Finally at peace, Ben became one with the Force. With the Emperor and his terrifying fleet destroyed, the galaxy was free once more. Rey traveled to Tatooine to honor her Jedi teachers, Luke and Leia. They had given her all the strength and guidance she needed. Rey knew that no matter what the future held, she wouldn't face it alone. The end. Well, not really. You see, as long as there's hope and as long as you're brave, it's never really the end. And sometimes you're afraid and that's okay. And sometimes you're mad and maybe not your best and that's okay too. Keep telling your story, keep trying, and someday you'll find that you'll be in one of the best stories too. Have a wonderful day, you guys, and may the force be with you. Baby Yoda, did you love that Star Wars story? You did? Baby Yoda loved it. I hope you guys liked it too. Up next, we have a song from Mr. Josh, and then we'll listen to story number three. <laughs> Mr. Josh back here again for another installment of the Common Ground Rock at the Blocks concert series. Today we're doing a very fun song. We're doing Five Little Monkeys Jumping on the Bed, but we're gonna do a rock and roll version. Just how I like it. All right, you guys ready? Five Little Monkeys Jumping on the Bed
Bye, everybody. See you next time. I hope you guys loved that song. Well, now it's time for story number three. And this one I'm reading, and it was one of, well, it's the sequel to one of my favorite books from when I was a little girl. All right, so here is Miss Nelson Has a Field Day. Miss Nelson Has a Field Day. I'm so excited to read this to you because when I was a little girl, I loved the books about Miss Nelson. For some weeks now, gloom had blanketed the Horace B. Smeadley School. No one laughed or threw spitballs. No one even smiled. Miss Nelson was worried. Everyone was down in the dumps. Hamburgers again today. Even the cafeteria ladies had lost their sparkle. Mr. Blandsworth was so depressed, he hid under his desk. It's the worst team in the whole state, he said. And it was true. The Smedley tornadoes were just pitiful. They hadn't won a game all year. They hadn't even scored a single point. And lately, they, only, they seemed only interested in horsing around and giving coach the business. Why practice? They said, we'll only lose anyway. We're in for it now, said Pop Hansen, the janitor. The big Thanksgiving game is coming up and the werewolves from Central are real animals. They'll make mincemeat out of our team. What's to be done, said Miss Nelson. We need a real expert, said Pop. That afternoon, while Miss Nelson was grading papers, she heard wild laughter. It was coming from the teacher's lounge. Coach Armstrong had cracked up. I'll make us a fresh pot of coffee, said Miss Nelson. When Coach had calmed down, Miss Nelson took him home in a taxi. You need a nice long rest, she said. The next day, it was announced over the PA that Coach Armstrong would be out for a long time with the measles. Who will take his place? Said the kids. When Miss Nelson passed by Lulu's after school, a serious discussion was going on. We need someone who can really get the team into shape for the big Thanksgiving game, said one kid. Somebody who knows how to get results. It's too bad Miss Viola Swamp isn't around, said another. Who? said a kid who was new to town. You've never heard of Viola Swamp, said the first kid. She's the meanest substit substitute in the whole wide world. She's a real witch. You'd have no, she'd have no trouble getting results. Mr. Blandsworth happened to hear. Hmm. Hmm, said Miss Nelson, and she wasted no time getting home. After rummaging around in her closet, she found what she was looking for, an ugly black sweatsuit. Then she made an important phone call. I'll be right there, said the voice at the other end. The next day, Mr. Blandsworth announced there would be football practice as usual. Whoever it is, said the guys, let's really give him the business. The doors to Coach's office flew open and out stepped a lady in an ugly black dress. My name is Viola Swamp, said the lady, and I'm here to get results. It's Blacksworth called the guys and they laughed him off the field. Oh, rats, said Blandsworth. How could they tell? Just then the guys heard the sound of squeaky tennis shoes. I am Coach Swamp, said a lady in the black sweatsuit. Holy smoke, cried the team, the swamp. The team's fullback tried to pussyfoot away. Not so fast, Mr. Smarty, said Coach Swamp. Wow, said one of the guys, did you see that tackle? 
Coach Swamp was a real expert. She put the team to work right away. You guys had never done, the guys had never done so many leg raises. More, said Coach Swamp. They had never run so fast. Faster, yelled Coach Swamp. This is murder, said the guys. Pipe down, said Coach Swamp. In only a matter of days, the Smeedley Tornadoes were looking better. Coach Swamp really gave them the business. Mr. Blandsworth was a little puzzled. However, who is that Miss Swamp, he said. Maybe Miss Nelson knows. I'll go ask. Miss Nelson was busy grading papers when Mr. When Blandsworth looked in. I don't want to disturb her, said Blandsworth. She probably doesn't know anyway. Down on the field, Coach Swamp was having a little talk with the team. And, I, and don't even think you can horse around again, she said, because the swamp will be watching. When Coach Armstrong returned after his rest, he was very surprised by what he found. The guys played like a real team. How did this happen? Said Coach Armstrong. Err, uh, said the guys. There's, Miss, there's Coach Swamp and there's Miss Nelson. On Thanksgiving Day, the tornadoes clobbered the werewolves 73 to three. It was a great day for the Horace B. Smedley School. Go team, yay! Mr. Blandsworth treated the whole team to hot dogs at Lulu's. Miss Nelson went home tired and happy. Sometimes you have to get tough, she told her sister Barbara. And by the way, thanks for filling in for me. Any time, said Barbara, any So oh, I think Miss Nelson was Coach Swamp and she got her sister, Barbara, to be her. How funny was that? Maybe we can find Miss Nelson is Missing, which is the first book where Miss Nelson pretends to be Miss Swamp. Or maybe it's her sister. I can't remember. Maybe we should read it. I hope you guys liked this book. I sure did. And remember, when teachers ask you to do something or coaches ask you to do something, you should listen because your team and your class, they need you to be a good listener and a good pay and pay good attention. Did you guys like that story? Well, it makes me want to go outside. So let's check the weather. What's the weather like today? Can we go outside and play? All right, guys, let's take a peek out of our window. <gasps> It looks cloudy this morning and like maybe some thunderstorms are gonna roll in in the afternoon. But remember, can we go outside if it's a little cloudy? Absolutely. Fresh air is great for us, no matter what the weather, as long as it's safe to be outside. The only times that it's not safe is when it's thunder and lightning or when it's super, super, super windy, you don't wanna be outside then either. But otherwise, as long as you have the right clothes on, then it's totally great to be outside. That means when it's super hot, we wanna wear clothes that keep us cool, like tank tops and shorts and sunscreen and hats. And when it's cold out, we wanna wear coats and hats and mittens and boots. And when it's rainy, we want rain boots and umbrellas. And if it's really hot, we can skip the raincoat. But if it's cold, we want a raincoat to protect us from the water, right? All right, guys, let's have another tune for Mr. Dash and I'll be right back.
Thank you. Thank you. I hope you guys loved that song. We've got one more song, but that's it for Circle Time today. I hope you guys loved your three stories on Thursday, September 3rd, 3 and 3. Have a great day and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Looking up at a sunny sky, so shiny blue, and there's a butterfly. Well, isn't that a super fantastic sign? It's gonna be a fantastic day. Such marvelousness I'm gonna bring. I've got a pocket full of songs that I'm gonna sing. I'm ready to take on anything. Hooray! Some super fun surprise around each corner. Just riding on a rainbow, gonna be okay. Hey, not giving up today. There's nothing getting in my way. Knock, knock me over, I will get back up again. If something goes a little wrong, you can go ahead and bring it on. If you knock, knock me over, I will get back up again. Whoa, oh, 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 get back up again. Whoa, oh, 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 o